name is Alyssa and I am a Ramsey County telecommunicator and a certified training officer and I've been with the county for two years. What I like best about the job is knowing that I'm coming to help people, um, knowing that someone needs my assistance and being able to be at their assistance and do the best I can to help over the phone. Actually today I spoke with a child whose mom had collapsed and he was very upset, um, frantic, and I kind of calmed him down and told him, you know, I need your help to help your mom to get the police and ambulance started so that they could help her. She went into a seizure after he called while I was still on the phone with him, so that kind of scared him. So helping the children really, I always take that away, always, because they're so frantic and I just, they don't know what to do and they think their world is ending. But knowing that there's someone there to help on the other end of the line, I think calms them. I am a mother, I am a sister, I'm a daughter. Um, and so it's hard not to place yourself emotionally in those calls. Um, it's hard when you feel like you can't give enough because you're on the phone, you're not physically there. The person's in crisis, they may not be able to lift somebody's head when they need to and just trying to do everything over the phone verbally is difficult. When the callers call and they're screaming in your ear at the top of their lungs, they're, you know, I know that they're in a frantic state, but it's hard when, when they're yelling and then I can't yell because that's just a screaming match that isn't going to go anywhere. And so it's, it's hard to be in a calm state when you're in panic, but it really makes it that much more difficult, 100% when you're screaming and yelling and then you're standing in a bunch of background noise where people are screaming and yelling and the music's blaring and everything. It, it makes it really difficult when you try to talk to someone with a lot of noise. The first question is because we need to know where you are um, or not so much where you are if the emergency isn't where you are, we need to know the location. If we don't have an address or a location, an intersection, a building, a landmark, we have no idea where we're going and help is not going to get there. Um, the second, you know, the next set of questions is basically for our responders. We need to know if there's weapons because we don't want our responders getting injured. We need to know if there's a crime in progress, if the suspect is still there so that we know who we're looking for. We need to know what they're wearing so that if they take off on us and we pass them on the street, we know that that's the person we're looking for. It's all for our responders. If you dial 911 and you don't need us, stay on the line so that we know you don't need us. We don't know if you're in a situation where you dialed because you don't want the other person to know. You hang up so that we come. Um, and it ties up another line again because we call back. The call will come through to us whether you hang up, you think you hung up fast enough or not. And we will always call back just to make sure everything's okay. Um, we have elderly people. Um, in our county who are lonely. Spouses have passed, families out of state, children are grown up. They just want to call and talk and they'll call and talk to you about their day. If I have time, I'll talk to them and you know they usually they know us by they know a lot of us by name um, and especially the time of call, the time that they call. Um, I have had someone call because they wanted to return a dollar popsicle that they just bought because it tasted freezer burned. I've had, it, it changes and every day it's different. And that's what I really like about this job. It's always different. Could be happy in the next call, could be horrific. Could be funny in the next call, could be sad. It's always different. 